Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips, which is brought to you by Wellness Forum Health and the Wellness Forum Institute for Health Studies. First, I have an announcement, something free coming up. Uh, it's called Thrive in 2025, Your Best Health Ever. Um, this is going to take place Tuesday, January 7th at 7.30 Eastern Time via Zoom. It's free. The topic is the 10 things you must do to achieve great health in 2025. And I promise a couple of these will most likely surprise you. So all you have to do is send me an email at pampopper.msn.com and we will sign you up. Um, another event I want to announce is uh, kind of a cute name, In One End and Out the Other, your marvelous digestive tract and how it works, the journey through uh, your digestive tract that food takes, all the things that can go right and wrong as it travels through your digestive uh, tract. So we'll talk about the microbiome and how to maintain it, colon health and disease, constipation, diarrhea, diverticular disease, leaky gut, gallbladder, the truth about H. pylori, digestive enzymes, and more. So it's an all-day Saturday, January 11th event. And um, if you are interested in learning how you qualify to participate, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com, and I'll have Kelly get back in touch with you. All right, so I have a couple of super interesting things to talk about today. Uh, first news item, since our first major event of 2025 is about your incredible digestive tract, here are some important facts about your microbiome, which we'll be discussing in great detail. According to a recent article posted on Medscape, the future of medicine will revolve around our gut. The author advises that someday soon doctors will prescribe treatment not just for humans, but for the trillions of bugs that reside in the human gut, which play a role in almost all major diseases. They can protect or harm human health beyond just the gastrointestinal tract, depending on your composition. The microbiome influences the development of conditions ranging from cardiovascular disease to depression and cancer and the ability to absorb and utilize any drug or nutrients from your food depends on the composition of the bugs in your gut. So here's a just a little brief thing on how your diet affects your gut. The food you eat is the food your gut bugs eat too. The microbes use food to manufacture metabolites that interact with the thin layer of epithelial cells lining your gut. On the other side of that epithelium resides some of the largest concentrations of immune cells in your body. Metabolites produced by your gut bugs determine the performance of these cells. In other words, your diet will positively or negatively impact your immune system depending on the choices you make. We'll review in the workshop the various metabolites produced by your microbiome. You won't believe how many there are. And also how they impact your immune system and almost all other functions of your body. We'll also decide or discuss what to do about a microbiome that has been neglected or abused, which is the case with a whole lot of people who are arriving at Wellness Forum. Most of us at some point in time didn't eat well, didn't take care of ourselves. I know that was my story. And so I literally had to rebuild my body from the inside out, which I did, and then maintain that great state of, state of health. So we'll talk about that as it pertains to your microbiome. All right, quick announcement before we get to uh, news item number two. Um, I've announced this a couple times. Health professionals training fees are increasing in 2025. It's the first time since we started training people in 2009 that we've done this. By the way, we have programs for people who've never trained to do anything in healthcare at all. And another thing that is coming up, we're really excited about this, is that we're going to be working hard in 2025 to build the practices of the people who graduate from our programs. We're going to be your business partner if you choose to do that, uh, helping you to find and um, bring into your practice new people, manage some of the stuff like newsletters and promotions and things of that nature. So um, if you want to talk about this, just send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. We can set up a time to talk. This next couple of weeks are, I, I'm never going to say I'm, I've got a lot of spare time, but it's a little bit less busy than normal. So happy to spend some time with you and let you know what we're going to do and how we can help you. I really want an army of people who understand this informed process of managing your health. And um, we're going to be working hard on that in the coming year, years, decades to come. 
All right, so the second news item has to do with musculoskeletal health. And um, we, I've been advising people for almost three decades that drugs and surgery for most musculoskeletal aches and pains are very bad ideas. And a new study just shows how bad they are. In this study, researchers randomized 101 adults with chronic back pain to honestly prescribed placebo, which means that the patients who received the placebo knew that what they were getting was a saline injection or usual care. Those randomized to placebo watched educational videos, two of them, which they could watch again if they chose to. And they also had a conversation with a treating physician. The patients were notified that they were receiving a placebo with no active ingredients, that placebos can have powerful effects on health and produce endogenous opioid release, which is how pain relief is achieved, and that placebos can work by triggering autonomic or automatic non-conscious pathways like the body's natural healing response. They were also told that a positive attitude could be helpful, but wasn't necessary in order for the placebo to work. The patients in the group agreed that they would not seek any other treatment. They would just take the placebo injection and see what happened. The results, placebo injection without any deception, they knew they were getting a placebo, reduced chronic back pain intensity for one month post-treatment, and then the benefit lasted for at least one year after the sham treatment. We say at least one year because that was the length of follow-up. The effect was equal to usual care, drugs and surgery. Well, obviously placebo is significantly less harmful than drugs, some of which have super awful side effects, and surgeries, which are often useless and even lead to worsening joint and back pain and sometimes disability. My own mother ended up an invalid as a result of a back surgery that didn't work out so well. And when I was injured in a serious accident, I knew not to take drugs or allow surgery. Instead, I healed myself through aggressive exercise and yoga. And I will be teaching my first um, virtual yoga class of the year in January. So if you're interested in that, send me an email as well. All right, well, that's it for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you on Thursday with more news. Thank you for watching.